Thank you very much. Um, what you see behind me is a picture of a Fukushima reactor. Almost a year ago, actually it would be March 11, 2011, that we had a huge uh, accident, an uh, earthquake on the east coast of Japan. And the question is really the nuclear energy dead or alive? And this is the question that many of us had to deal with because we looked at a picture like this of the same reactor facility after it was devastated by a 9.1 Richter earthquake. So the question really was uh, addressed by a lot of uh, politicians and especially in Europe, a um, couple of countries, in particular um, Germany and Italy, decided to do away with uh, nuclear reactors altogether. And of course, for Italy, it's not a very difficult thing because they don't have any nuclear reactors. For Germany, it has 17 reactors. They have been one of the leaders in designing reactors uh, in the world. They decided, for political reasons, environmental reasons, to do away with it. This is a really a tough decision because their approach is to look into renewables. What are the renewables? Some of you have heard of renewables uh, energy sources. Wind and solar are part of the renewable energy sources. And also, in order to supplement these sources of energy, they decided to use um, clean fossil fuel. It is hard to imagine, but gas actually, using natural gas for generating electricity is actually very clean compared to coal and oil. So they decided to use that. But the issue here is that uh, consumers have to pay for this lack of nuclear energy because nuclear energy is cheap, believe it or not. And also, one of the other advantages of nuclear energy is that it's CO2 free. Now, the, the greenhouse gases are not part of the uh, generation of uh, fumes for, na for uh, nuclear energy. So they had to make a tough decision. This decision is understandable, but at the same time, it's, it's going to impact them in the future because you need to have a base load, a sustainable energy that will supplement uh, renewables. And uh, so we have to worry about nuclear energy because it generates some of those nuclear uh, radiate, r radioactive material that will stick around for thousands of years. So we have to worry about that. But some countries like France had dealt with it in a very interesting way. They have designed the nuclear power plants almost identical to each other, using a cookie cutter approach. That means they have 50 or so nuclear power plants. They're all identical, and they use the same technology for most of them. So what does that do? If you have a new safety matter, safety issue, you will apply to all of them. If you have to train technicians, they don't have to learn about three different uh, nuclear power plants. These are all identical. In the United States, we don't have that approach. Many of these nuclear power plants are very different from each other. So, so that said, 75% of the electricity in France is generated by nuclear uh, power plants. And they have fewer problems with their uh, reactors than we do in some other countries that have a lot less electricity generated by, um, by nuclear power plants. So we have to find ways of dealing with nuclear reactors. They have their own problems. Power plants are very expensive. Nuclear power plants will cost about $10 billion. You have to worry about uh, fuel rods. After the reactor works for a while, the fuel rods have to be changed. They have to be replaced with new fuel rods. They have to worry about proliferation because these fuel rods carry some nuclear material that can be turned into bombs. So, so there are concerns that we have to deal with. But the fact that the Fukushima accident, that huge earthquake caused people to think about nuclear um, reactors is of concern. So let's, let's visit what happened in Fukushima and what were the sources of problems. Well, as you can see from this picture, it's a horrific accident where you have a wave coming at you higher than the walls around the facility. And that's exactly what happened. Fukushima accident was a civil engineering flaw more than anything else. If they had designed the wall in front of the uh, reactor high enough to handle 14 meters of, 14 meters of uh, tsunami, it would have probably stopped the flood flooding. 
What happened, the design was underestimated, and it was designed for a seven-meter-high tsunami. The second wave that hit the reactor was way over the wall, and it basically inundated the whole facility. This happens once in a 1,000 years. They should have put the money, invested in it, created a higher wall. And as you can see from the picture behind me, on the left, the water is coming in. If you look at it, those cars are going to be inundated with water. The water comes probably about 12 feet, maybe even more. And what happened is that the reactor worked exactly as it was designed. As the reaction is going on, as soon as the earthquake occurred, not the tsunami, as soon as the earthquake occurred, the fuel rods, the control rods came down and stopped the reaction. Basically put the reactor in neutral. But the problem is the reactor is hot, super hot. The job of the reactor is to boil water and create steam, just like you would do in any uh, power generation. So the next step is to keep it cool, as they say. So in order to do that, you have to have additional power, because the first thing happens to a power plant when it gets hit by an earthquake is you lo it, lo it loses its power. So we have to find ways of bringing power to the reactor. And uh, guess what? The flooding came, and it inundated the basements where the auxiliary power sources were, the diesel generators. You don't put the diesel generators in the basement. That was the lesson learned. <laughs> so that was another flaw with the design, the wall and the generators. You put the generators high up so it doesn't get flooded. So there's no power. The next thing to do is, is to resort to batteries. The batteries will come in. They help the control room so you can run the sensors, run the pumps, run the valves, and get the core to cool down. The batteries ran out. They had trucks filled with batteries, but they could not get to the reactor. Can you guess why? The traffic post-earthquake was covering the, the roads and the highways. You should have the trucks parked in the, in the facility. Many lessons learned, and countries decided to overcome the safety issues. So the problem is that Many countries have revisited their um, idea of having power plants. And as you can see, China is extremely aggressive. The ones in blue are the countries that decided to do away with it in Europe, Italy, Switzerland, Germany. Italy didn't have it, of course. And China revisited their safety measures, and they decided to continue. And that's why you see they have so many reactors going into the production and the development. They're putting a lot of time and effort into this. They're working on it. As you can see, a lot of people are involved. They are using more advanced technology than what was in uh, Japan. They're using something called passive safety. So remember what I said, the reactor core has to be kept cool. So what they do is they put a whole bunch of uh, containers of water right above the core of the reactor, and by gravity, the valves will open and dump water on top of the reactor. No need to have electromechanical pumps or anything to do with uh, electricity. So that's a very good technique. It's a very advanced design. Some other countries like India, they have major problems with producing electricity for their people. 40% of the people in India, 1.2 billion people, do not have electricity. Another 40% have electricity for a few hours. So they need to rely on sources of energy based on nuclear power plants. So they're going to go back and revisit and come up with uh, new technologies. So the future really for us is to focus on having renewable energy, sources of solar, wind, and other sources of power. But we need to have a base load to supplement these renewables. Why? Because if it's a dark day, if it's a cloudy day and there's no wind, we need to have another source of energy to supplement the renewables. One way to do is that when we have excess power, we store it in batteries. But that makes it very expensive. People are working on that. So we need to have base load. If the base load is not a fossil fuel, which generates CO2, if we want to have a green um, energy, CO2-free, we need to have something like nuclear energy. But we have a lot of work to do because we have to work on the safety measures, and we have to find ways of improving the generation of electricity based on nuclear energy. 
In the United States, the, the NRC, Nuclear Regulatory Commission, is working on improving safety. And not too long ago, uh, two reactors in Georgia were approved. And there will be the first set of new generation of reactors in the United States. Although in this country, we have more than 100 reactors, more than any other country in the world, but they are re relatively old and aging. And they have to be revisited with new safety measures. So the future, in my opinion, will be a combination of renewable energies and another source of energy, something like a nuclear energy that is CO2 free. Thank you.